Hey! Hey! Kalindo, hey. as they say in the... <laughs> How are you? Well, yeah, afternoon over here. So, so we've got... Oh, wow. So, so I've had a bit more time to get adjusted than you. Nice, but, yeah, just having my coffee right now, my morning coffee. Yeah, in, in, front of, in, front of, uh, in front of the Disney castle, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. cool, huh? Well, as you can see, I, I'm just chilling on this beach here. I love I it. Be, I bet you didn't even realize that Bath had uh, palm trees, but yeah. I know. I, <laughs> is that where you are right now? Yeah, I'm in Bath. Yeah, yeah, Bath? that's where I live. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, it's uh, it. kind of it's quite sleepy, being honest, but it's also quite nice in that respect. It's yeah. it's like a kind of a, a, without being backward, it's a, it's untouched a little bit, if you know what I mean, which is quite nice. So, but somewhat every year, you know, things get more and more. <laughs> I can't wait to go back out there, man. Yeah, uh, when was the last time you were in England? Uh, last year. Last year we did... Um, oh, yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, the, yeah. Family. Oh, my God. Dirty, so much. Dirty computer. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll get round to everything, obviously, but it's it's been incredible seeing, um, like, as a Janelle, like, I found Janelle probably, uh, well, obviously, uh, the first thing I think I heard was uh, called Law on the... Um, on Idlewild because I'm a big Outcast fan anyway, and then right. and then um, when Arc Android when I found that that was like basically just like my favorite record in so long and such a kind of impressive <laughs> yes. such and like such a find if you know what I mean like who is this person this is ridiculous kind of thing <laughs> and, uh, yes. and uh, like just uh, all of it like concept presentation all right. the diversity of the songs songwriting the voice the production like just right. everything was just perfect i still rate arc android is probably the best record of this it's one of those things where I, there might be something might pop up where i go oh that gives it a bit of a fight but i'd yeah. say off the top of my head it's my favorite record of this century yes, so far you. so you know like and i and i just can't see anyone bettering it either which is the crazy right. <laughs> like right. back in the old days you'd, you'd say that about like an album and you think but there's always something that's gonna like top it like the only chance really that we have is when uh, we return to the Cindy Mayweather, um, you know, like, i guessing it's a trilogy, but it's hard to tell from the dots. I keep watching the dots along the bottom, but they seem to change. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Ever so I, don't, slightly. I don't know where we are in the story. Or like, I, I know we're getting further, but yeah, so yes, I, uh, I'm obsessed with the, the Cindy Mayweather concept, so all of it. Yes. I think it's a beautiful met metaphor. And you know, it's uh, yeah. So so yeah. So anyway, so so what I was going to say is, from coming in at that point and seeing you guys, mm -hmm. uh, it was a birthday present from my brother that we went to see you at the Roundhouse for on, yeah. on yes. that tour, and that was such an amazing gig. And and she really mm -hmm. delivers. Obviously, you all do. Like it, the, I should say, Janelle Monae, the experience delivers. If you know what I mean, like it's a yes. huge, huge, uh, multifaceted, interactive. You know, like loads of things going on little storyline threads running through and you know all sorts of great stuff going on there so so it was just Absolutely. such a huge experience and so to see you guys um i caught you uh brixton academy on um electric lady oh. as well which was great but then obviously you know things mm -hmm. have stepped up to a different kind of level in in all of these ways the presentation yes. the the yes. sound and everything and then obviously right. it, i i feel like a dirty computer is slightly tangential in a sense yes um, yes very much like so. that it's not it's not like a development of the the albums that we've kind of have and even the ep the metropolis ep before that um i right. feel like it's not so much an extension as that so much as a quick little detour to kind of i guess let janelle express herself outside of the confines of cindy i guess and that's absolutely and everything well but, yeah so so like i uh, so to see but to see it all just get so and now obviously it's it's a huge, like, uh, it's a huge phenomenon, Janelle now, <laughs> like movies and, you know what I mean? And like, yes. and you know, uh, I, I'm personally a glutton for everything I can get of her. I'm quite, quite uh, unashamedly, uh, unashamedly in love. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so. You're so, not alone. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's, I think that's the, that's the main thing that gets me the most is that there was a, a long time there, I felt like I was like 
want to like go, you you don't know this person you've got to check out this person she's the deal I, i'd always say right. you know, it's like the voice of a young michael jackson singing songs written by stevie wonder produced by outcast and they go what right. and i say i say conceptualized by kate bush or david bowie and like and they're like what and like oh, yeah and then i show them that it'd be oh my god it was as good as you said it was kind of thing yeah, <laughs> do you know right. what i mean so yeah so, yeah. so yeah it's a real um but I mean, I guess sometimes things need to be a bit more direct and simple to kind of cross over to a huge amount of people. And I feel like um, stuff like Make Me Feel is, uh, you know, it's like a, a, a nail on head, get sweaty, dance floor song. And so therefore there's something about that that's going to translate a little more than the elaborate kind of, you know, uh, conceptualization yeah. and all these kind of things. The right. people, I guess, at the moment, with everything existing as more just one song that people kind of click on by streaming or whatever, this is a Very medium so. where it's a single story each time, which right. was what actually leads me straight into the interview. Thanks so much for spending the time, by the way, before I forget to say it, because oh, I am really, pleasure. really appreciative. Well, it's my pleasure Thanks. too. So Thanks for um, having me. So the, um, it leads quite nicely onto what you've been doing, because your singles are all quite different and um and you even sing in a totally different range in all of them and it's <laughs> yes. like your and i couldn't tell how much of that is um on the axis between um the character that suits the song and you kind of i don't know how long you've been singing and whether you're feeling your way and trying out a load of different things or and where the axis is on that and i was wondering if you could tell me on that Right. Well, you know, it's, it's all planned. And uh, <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, you know, each song, um, I feel, uh, warrants a certain tonality, you know, when sure. it comes to vocals, even guitar, you know, yeah. um, as much as I love, um, you know, Les Pauls and Stratocasters, some songs ha have to have a, a, a Telecaster or a Stratocaster. Right, yeah. Um, so, uh, same thing with singing. So, um, uh, the song Sugar, I, I tried it out kind of in a lower pitch just to see what that would sound like right. in a more man, you know, masculine kind of sound. Yeah, yeah. And it was just like, mm, this is a little it. creepy. <laughs> right, yeah. Really? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I get that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Sure. I mean, there's something, I mean, obviously as a big Prince fan, which obviously I'm sure we'll get around to that at some point as well. But yes. um, there's a, there's a, even with Michael, I guess, uh, uh, Michael even more so maybe seemed, so unthreatening because right. of his and so much uh unthreatening is almost like a, a um de a, a emasculating word i, I would uh -huh. more say mm -hmm. uh coaxing maybe right. uh, or <laughs> in, enticing and that yes. like prince especially it's like yes. when you think about prince it's very much the in, it's enticing and it's like yes. drawing you in and it's showing a sensitive side to kind of allow you to be a bit freer if that makes sense like it's like right. inviting the girl in saying hey like we can get into some stuff and it's not going to yeah. get threatening or weird or do you know yeah. what i mean like I yes think, i think yeah that, Prin that prince felt a little bit more like adult uh entertainment compared to michael jackson for me course, when i was a kid yeah. you know what i mean but it's incredible how um <laughs> it's incredible how light um michael jackson is perceived as being despite the fact that actually way you make me feel is a very right. vicious kind of song and you know there's a lot of you know a load of the, uh, his uh, material is actually very direct towards women you know especially as it gets yes. into dangerous era and stuff like yes that. and yes. and so it's funny how he still maintained this kind of uh, perception there in everybody's mind as as almost couldn't get out of being a child in people's mind until right obviously other things that we don't want to even get near <laughs> which yeah. is for another interview it's not for this not interview true. at all <laughs> so yeah i mean you know it's it's just interesting i feel like something about that obviously you know luther vandross teddy pendergrass things like that alexander o'neill even they come across as very much and alexander o'neill is much more in that um high uh wilson pickett kind of uh you know, uh, na nasal almost kind of vibe, even yes. like Aaron Hall and like a lot of your new Jack singers and stuff like that. But they mm -hmm. all still definitely come off like dudes. Do you know what I mean? Like right. dudes yes. being dudes towards girls, if that makes right. sense. So, whereas right. I think there's something, there's something a bit slinkier and uh, um, 
Yeah, I don't know. Uh, strange people. Uh, in, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. even pin it on androgyny so much as just being mm-hmm. in touch with more than just the, that, right. the, the male um, thrust, right. if that makes sense. You know, yes. so <laughs> it comes off a bit slinkier and a bit more, it's almost sneakier yeah. in a way, which is kind of yeah. cool, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> So yeah, so so uh, when you did all these, uh, obviously all these songs, like oh, it's interesting you said about the um, the tone and also the timbre of your voice. Yes. They're very very different on each of the songs as well. Yes. There's a much more. Um, uh, it's, it made me think of Lenny Kravitz a bit on uh, the uh, flowers. It had that yes. kind of you know like that kind of um, mid kind of semi rocking shout out, but also. You know, throw, a slightly uh, hippie-ish throwback, which works so well with the context of the song again. And yes, so it does yes. feel like you're making little snapshots, little like individual postcards, which I was going to say, um, how much of this comes from like a lot of experience working with other artists and being like, I want to try all these things. And how much of it is like, I want to make each thing a specific thing. Because a lot of the artists that both you work with and also then you've ended up associated with are very good at, doing these kind of specific snapshots of here you go here's a concept here's the look the the very sound of it it's all a, a particular it's one item of art does that make sense yeah yeah it's all encompassing i mean um um you know we're we're surrounded now by so many different uh, types of music and you know as the world is is getting smaller and smaller um we're in tune with so many things that are going on around the world and um, so yeah, uh, Flowers was definitely a look back into my childhood and um, I, you know, of course the, the era of music back then, yeah. um, rock and roll was definitely like number one. Yes, and, course, um, yeah. and I just remember, you know, going, like leaving my house, and going to school and, and just uh, naturally tripping off of the beauty of nature and trees and the sky sure. and, you know, yeah. whether it's blue skies or cloudy skies or what right, have yeah. you. And, and so, um, and I remember um, like really like uh, mentally, spiritually kind of getting off on the beauty of the, of the flowers and the trees. So sure. uh, yeah. dancing things in the that, winds. That's things that, that end up a little lost when you exactly. get caught in the grind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, you got to pay bills and stuff. You're not yeah. looking at the trees like that. You're looking at your, your bank account. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? sure. yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> Well, that yeah. leads me quite nicely. I, I decided you're doing a, a whole lot of press at the moment. And so I didn't want it to be boring because you must end up saying a lot of the same things. So I was hoping at least to, I hope to frame it differently. You probably end up saying a lot of the same things and I'll probably circle around to anything we didn't manage to catch, but I framed it with a theme. So because your new single is called Summertime, I've yeah. decided to ask you summer related questions. Okay, uh, okay. So, so my first was, your summer memories of a kid and the music that you heard around. Mm. Wow. Um, you know, uh, hair bands, <laughs> rock and roll hair bands, um, talking about, you know. What was your late... hair like and what, what kind of age are we saying? Are we? Oh, it was definitely a, uh, an afro. <laughs> it was definitely awesome. like a short afro. <laughs> You know, and um, but I was such a fan of of different types of hairstyles, and I remember seeing the musical Hair, right? You know, loving it. <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, yeah, wow, this is so cool! Like you can actually um, have rock and also have an opera at the same time, and it's just sure, uh, it's right. very that modern. That must have uh, stood you in good stead for what was to come in the future, obviously. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I thought. <laughs> I saw Tommy and I, I kind of, even though the music, oh my God, the music was just so rock and roll and so beautiful. And um, Pete Townsend is such a genius, you know, the ending though freaked me out. So I was really young when I saw it. And right. Yeah. I was just like, some of these things are quite, um, it's funny when you watch back and you go, I found this when I was eight, even just watching yeah. Purple Rain. Uh, when you watch oh. Purple Rain, you're like, oh, I was watching this when I was eight, wasn't I? And yeah, like, right. you know, there's some quite crazy <laughs> stuff in there to be yeah. experiencing as an eight-year-old. Right? Seriously? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> um, so then, okay, so your first summer playing guitar. Mm. What first was the guitar? guitar. Uh... The first summer, I would say it was my favorite dream guitar I've ever had, ever wanted. And it was my, uh, it was a yellow Fender Stratocaster. Right. Um, and the, real rich yellow. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and what kind of, and were you in a band? 
I was. Yeah. I was in a band. Yeah. I was in a band at the time called The Mix. And, right. What uh, kind of stuff? It was rock. It was definitely. It was kind of like Def Leppard. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Cool. And um, it was two black guys, two white guys. That's why we called it The Mix. Oh, cool. Yeah, wicked. Awesome. Yeah. We we're like, wow, this is cool. We're like different colors, man. They're amazing. How naughty. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking the rules. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I am a long uh, living color. Uh, upset. They're like my favorite, probably my favorite band of all time. So yeah, I like long. And, you know, growing up on the Prince thing, I've always been like right across the board for like all, all the time. In fact, you know, if I reel off like a lot of my heroes, it takes a while before I get to any white guys. <laughs> so, oh, you know, like, I'm like Muhammad Ali, Miles Davis, Perry, right, right, uh, right. Bruce Lee, and yeah, like, like right. Prince. So like, just keep going. Right, like, Michael Jackson. Oh, oh yeah, John Lennon. I got one. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, go. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, yeah. It's cooking now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. So it's so, yeah. Pretty, yeah. yeah so. So, okay, so then, uh, so what was your first summer spent in vans and playing, like, festivals and stuff? And some of your memories about that. Definitely, that would be, hmm, let's see, that would be in vans playing festivals. I would say, I'd say Janelle Monet. I would say it would be 2000 and maybe, like, eight, seven or eight. I'll say eight. Uh, it's a blur now what year and, it was and uh, what, uh differences between playing festivals compared to your indoors things what do you what do you like about it versus what do you maybe not like about it? i don't know mm -hmm. yeah i i love the energy you know of all the people that are out there just just for music and for hanging and um um and they're just out there in tents all day and night and the, the atmosphere is uh, very special yeah. So do you like that. the outdoors? Do you like playing do. with the open? I do. I do. As much as I love the indoors, um, there's something special about playing outside. You know, I feel like you're even closer to God, really. Strange. There's a definitely something a little uh, intangible that's going on. Like maybe it's because the, uh, I feel like a lot of it's to do with obviously molecules being pushed about and, you know, Absolutely. the kind of relation between our physicality and our surroundings and the vibrations and things like that. And I feel Absolutely. like maybe out in the open air, something different happens where it's not as compressed or something. Right. And then, right. so there's a different, there's a different energy for some reason. Yeah, I don't know yeah. where, how to put my finger on it, but yeah. No, it's sweaty compressed. though, isn't it? Very it's sweaty. sweaty though. Yeah, it's sweaty. It's wet. <laughs> it rains a lot, you know. How do you <laughs> stay looking cool? Because obviously you look cool all the time and you've got all these yeah. outfits and they can't become messes do you just do you, do you um do you have that morris day thing where you just don't sweat <laughs> I, I wish no, i'm drenched after a show is over no usually what i do is i just move around as quickly as possible so no one can tell how soaking i am <laughs> awesome there's some uh there's uh if you see that uh footage of like jimmy page at live aid and he's just like like he's more he's more water than he is man at that like <laughs> <laughs> it's like sweat <laughs> yeah. My God. yeah yeah I, I sweat for england when i play as well so yeah so yeah yes. so um the, the obviously it wasn't quite summer but you did play some uh gigs in brazil with amy winehouse god rest her soul obviously yes. uh, and uh yeah uh so i just wondered whether you could tell me a little about a how that came about and then b um just what that was like really that that was a, a, a short tour around, across Brazil, right? Yes, it was uh, too short, you know, as far as I'm concerned. But um, yeah, I, it, I think it came about through Paradigm, our booking agency. Um, and I'm so thankful that we were able to do that because I've always been such a huge fan of yeah. Amy Winehouse. And uh, I, I couldn't wait to see her perform. That was my number one sure. thing. I was like, I was, I was, I knew our show would be great, but I, just wanted to focus on watching her after we were done and and man let me tell you it was uh it was a little it was kind of scary because she i don't think she appeared on the first song or something i i forget i think she took a break and, and it was just kind of like sure. 
like, a, like a plane moments. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> kind of like a plane taking off. It's like okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. But man, when, and that when was your first in, your first set with her was like <laughs> that was yeah. And I'm just like watching with my you know in awe with my eyes wide open and um and but she killed it. She sounded so amazing and um um you know and then she got the shows got better and better each each day. So I just remember okay. I need to meet her because a few nights went by and we didn't get to meet her yet. And right. I'm looking at the calendar and the tour is about to end. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, Lance, the trumpet player uh, and I decided we're going to, we'll make the move. So, right. um, we spoke to one of her band members, her band, um, they're all so amazing, such great, great people and really talented. And so, um, um one of the guys, uh, so was like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make it happen. So he, brought uh, Amy downstairs and um, we spoke and took a picture together yeah, and then yeah. uh, and then we just at that because of that we decided to have a party a tour party oh, wicked. Awesome. she she never met Janelle at the time so she said that she was pretty shy and that's why she didn't say hi to anybody yeah yet. yeah so yeah then we had a party and that we all got to mingle and that was awesome. really something special yeah I can imagine that's and that that must have been cool seeing Janelle and her that's like that's a little snapshot right there isn't yes. that for your brain isn't it I, I was i was lucky enough to see um the after show the final after show of prince's o2 shows uh, when amy the first thing that happened at 115 was the curtain opened and amy was there singing oh. love is the losing game and then prince would take like you know how that song's like usually two and a half minutes or whatever yeah. instead it was like six minutes with like yeah. a big santana-esque kind of solo in, yes. uh, after every verse and it was just amazing and to have oh that God. like to now that feels like I saw you know like that that's a heaven only admittance seriously now, yeah. isn't it? wow you know that's I mean? so, crazy so yeah so yeah. so yeah so that that's yeah. that um so yeah, yeah those little moments must be amazing where you're kind of like and it's um it's always so weird in retrospect, obviously, you know, because at the time you're just seeing something that's happening that's there at that time. Mm -hmm. You don't really think about those times when they're not going to be. And yeah, just how impactful right. those moments are going to be later. Like, they're pretty amazing at their time, you know, obviously. Yeah. You do, but but yeah. yeah, and then they become just um, little pieces of crystal that you never want to kind of tarnish or whatever you know, so, well so yeah uh yeah sorry yeah so um you're okay, good with so, words man <laughs> thanks i try i've got to write lyrics and i i used to write reviews and things like that so you know nice. i kind of like i've done a lot of stuff in my you know doing music if, if you don't uh you have to kind of like spread out and do a lot of different jobs and so i've done a fair amount of jobs in my time whilst ah. just trying to pursue the i don't only wanted to be an artist but you know but you end up taking on all these other stuff anyway don't you say good that. for you i know trust me <laughs> now is a really good time to take on other things <laughs> for me well you might as well if you've got the time do you know what i mean mm -hmm. so yeah um so okay so the last summer this is quite apt um be bearing that in mind the last summer because obviously musicians when it's sunny sometimes we're kind of locked indoors anyway recording so what was your last memories of being in a recording studio when it was really lush and summery outside <laughs> yesterday <laughs> today <laughs> <laughs> sure sure i mean you know uh, i'm i'm sitting here in my studio it's hard to tell with all the the stuff going on behind me but um all that excitement <laughs> but uh <laughs> but yeah it's tough you know um i i obviously the studios are inside i've never recorded an album outside but um yeah. um i'm so i'm kind of used to um you know being tempted to go outside but life. Yeah, yeah situation yeah living in new york you don't really want to go outside right now sure so yeah I'm, totally. I'm distracted was the bulk of your recording done would you uh in atlanta uh, like yes. with Janelle, yeah. Janelle albums, yes. They're, they're so, so far every album. So you've got a nice there. sunny, sunny environment there that you're constantly yes. missing every time you're in the studio. I'm guessing. Yeah, but but you know we're uh, you know I record for a couple hours, then I'll come outside and you know what I mean, go outside and get some sun and come. Right. And, yeah. I guess when it's yeah. always there, you don't need to worry. In England, you're like, oh, there's some sun. I've got to go out and grab it whilst <laughs> it's there. <laughs> right. but I guess when it's always there, you can do some, and then you can be, I've had enough sun. I can go in and do something fun and vice versa, if you know what exactly. I mean. So, 
so yeah, I guess it's totally different. I wanted to ask you a little about um, obviously your time down there. I, just as an aside, did you ever bump into the Outcast guys? I did. I totally yeah. did. Uh, let's see, the first time, I'm trying to remember, gosh, I forget which one I met first, but um, I, I worked at Guitar Center before Janelle got the record deal. And right. so I remember, I remember uh, Andre came to Guitar Center, so I met him first. Wicked. Um, then Big Boy, I met at uh, Sankonia. Right. And awesome. Oh, amazing. In, oh, in yeah. their little. Oh, in the studio, yeah, man. With the uh, with a, the organized with the organized uh, noise guys, or yeah, they were all yeah. there. Um, his whole crew. Andre wasn't there, but everybody else was there, and um, we ended up having a Super Bowl party Wicked. later that year at Stankoni. It was so much fun because it was the my New York Giants against the New England Patriots. Oh wow! So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you huge, invested, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. That was the year the Patriots have won every single game of the season. So they were, oh, they just wow. were away from being undefeated all year. Wow! <laughs> Surprise everybody and won. It was the most fun I've ever had at a Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> awesome. And so yeah. So what was that like? The vibe in the um, just to detail slightly. The vibe in the Stankonia studio with like. Did you hear like tunes going on whilst you were there and stuff oh, like yeah. that? Oh yeah, super cool. There's always you know uh, exciting new music playing. Um, man, they, it's such great energy. You know, very simple uh, studio. It wasn't like extra show offy or glitzy or anything like that. It was just yeah. real comfortable and and very nice. You know, and um, all the platinum records on the wall. You know, a right, reminder yeah. of where we were. You know, those guys yeah. are such geniuses. And we yeah. toured with them too, so it was, that was so much fun. Oh as well. right, yeah, I totally. Yeah totally missed that yeah yeah so yeah uh, how was that so where, where, uh, what tour what were they doing then that was their stankonia it was a, it, it was actually the the reunion tour oh uh, yeah yeah sorry the, yeah. The, uh well on this recent the when they did yeah. the, oh i went Perfect. to festivals to see that right oh, right okay. awesome right yeah yeah awesome. oh wow well that's even better right Right. Because I mean, yeah. that was like the ticket of the year. Like, don't yes. don't miss that if you just yes. like music, really. But like, uh, right. but as an Outcast fan, it was just like, ah. So yeah. So to be like opening on that is like just like the best, right? Another example of uh, you know, you can't wait to get back in the crowd and watch. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the hotel. What hotel? I'm staying. You yeah. Of I mean? course. Yeah. Why would you do anything but watch that? Yeah. Awesome! Seriously. Wow, that must have been great. So that was that was all over America, was it? That was a little bit of a little bit of everywhere. Um, uh, you know, I think we did. I remember we did like Atlanta, um, maybe somewhere else in America. I can't remember offhand. And then definitely some Europe shows, Oslo. Right. All right. Um, cool. Somewhere else, some other places too. Oh wow! It's, it's a shame blur. they didn't get you for festival that year. That would have been that would have been I know. good. Yeah, you, they had bands dropping out like flies as well on that show for some buster pulled out and that was that was a big oh. draw like that was oh, a, yeah. a big part of your ticket when you hear busters on a lineup you're like okay well that's a big part of my ticket do you know right. what I mean? so, and they just dropped out and put someone who played another night like in the same you know and dropped them over to that spot and they played twice over the festival kind of thing so uh. so yeah and uh someone else someone else big dropped out i can't remember who now but yeah Noel rogers was playing uh that one with chic as well so oh, yeah okay. so obviously you've had a bit of a uh, bit of time spent with Noel rogers as well that yes. how is that like kind of just like oh here's the guy who wrote like <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> he's in good times and like <laughs> incredible i mean he's such an incredible guitarist very underrated and and still even though he's he's appreciated and respected um oh my gosh he's we had a jam session one time uh playing um rhythm changes jazz rhythm changes and he <laughs> he can play jazz really really well yeah 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 uh, so he's so good and uh we're neighbors i'm not going to tell you where where i live no of course we, don't. Are, yeah, we yeah. are neighbors <laughs> i mean i can cool. tell you in private <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah i rented him on the street quite a bit um and uh we speak on the phone every now and, and again yeah um, yeah wicked how is that so must cool. be a little bit trippy i guess in a way very yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like wow you're i uh, summertime music once again i mean growing right, up yeah yeah you know, listening to chic as well and um just the disco vibe yeah you know, yeah yeah bgs all all that kind of uh, kind of music donna summer yeah, that, yeah. They, that's summer music too as well right yeah of course yeah totally 
Yeah, so yeah. you weren't part of the Disco Sucks movement, even though you were, uh, you were into your rock, you were, you were keeping yeah. it open, keeping I'm it Yankees, broad-minded. I'm Yankees Mets, you know, Giants Jets. <laughs> so yeah, disco, disco was beautiful. As much as I love rock and, and, you know, if I had to play one music, only one music would be rock, of course, but disco. Right, like, is, that, is, that, is that the case, right? If you say, yeah. if you were like Desert oh, Island yeah. Discs and you had one disc. Oh, oh, oh. oh it, it would be, I mean, it would be, it would have to be rock. Although I love jazz, you know, I love classical yeah. and I would love yeah, yeah. to have at least one CD of each, of each genre. Yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? I'd need, yeah. I'd, I'd like a desert island, like just a little holder of, of, right. of a few discs, you know? Right. Even That's why I'm like taking a Prince thing. album because then, yeah. then at least Prince, I've got it oh covered. Do you know? Yeah, covered. <laughs> That's why I like people like Prince, you know, Led Zeppelin, Queen. Yeah, because um, there's know, a breadth really... of stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's, right. there's some twists and turns. Well, Janelle, Janelle obviously, there's a huge, Janelle, of course. you know, huge, um, like, just a huge breadth in terms of the stuff that you can end up playing, which must yeah. keep you really inspired. I mean, like, yes, you, one minute you're playing, like, I don't know, Sir Green Down or something like that, and then you're, <laughs> and then you're doing, like, something completely, like, on the other side of things, like, I don't know, uh, um, What's the really nice one off Electric Lady where you solo on loads on the end? It was uh, Rock and Roll, that one? Yes, Rock and Roll. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, you know, like, they're, they're polar ends of a, of a spectrum, do you know what I mean? Right. And, then you've got, yeah. and then you've got, like, your Come Alive, obviously, which is just right. frenetic and, you know, yeah. crazy, crazy, um, yeah, almost like, uh, I think of it almost like uh, comedy shock rock or something, do you know what I mean? It's, like a, <laughs> yeah. it's got such a kind of over the top like ah, kind of yes. really, really cool <laughs> and it's always so energetic and so yeah. like it's almost over the top and it's like it's almost too yeah. much if you know which you is great obviously it. just the yeah. right amount really i was so happy that we played it at the oscars that yes. was our last I mean, that, show. what is it like doing something like that the oscars i mean obviously it's a huge setup is it is it just like oh i'm scared to even move because there's such a huge thing going on around me does it kind of stuff you or do you just have to go i'll tell you what i'm just gonna go go for it it's it's funny it's as huge as it appears on television and, and the stage was huge don't get me wrong it's t- kind of like a, a kind of like an elephant in a china shop being in there because so many people backstage um moving like clockwork but like every step is almost choreographed in a chaotic kind of way where if something goes wrong and, and something can go wrong very easily the yeah. whole thing is thrown off, you know? And, um, right, yeah, yeah. So super small venue out there in LA. Um, when it comes to backstage, it's unlike the, the Grammy Awards, which they have at the Staples Center, humongous right. basketball sure, arena. Sure, yeah. Um, this was course, at the, yeah. uh, the Nokia Theater, I believe. And um, right. kind of like, it's kind of like a, a little, it's kind of like a, an old school sure. theater, you know? Yeah, so you're you actually know. the dominant force in Australia when you're on the stage in a way aren't <laughs> yes. you? it's not like you're it's not like you're dwarfed by the enormity of something you're actually like right. I'm on yeah right. wow so so it's really nice as well seeing that Janelle factor when like she goes out and she makes it unpredictable do you know what I mean like mm-hmm. the, that's a crucial part in like live television like for one of a less punny description coming alive because yes. it really does actually like it becomes tangible and dangerous and do you know what I mean those kind of yeah. things and I feel like that was a uh, like that was something that just very few performers really have that that ability to kind of turn something around so that you're like I'm watching unpredictability right now which is just the most thrilling thing do you know what I mean I, I feel yes like, it makes you not want to leave you how know? is it performing like next to someone like I mean obviously you've known her now 14 years but right. how is it performing next to someone who you know is like has that to bring? Do you know what I mean? It it feels great. It's very comforting, you know, because I can trust that she is going to be on her A game every single night. Unlike and, and um, I guess you can go wild like, oh. <laughs> and still seem, and you're not going to stand out too much if you go wild as well. You're right. Oh no, I can't. No, no chance. No, not with her on stage. I don't yeah. think anyone can outshine or match her level of shine on stage. So but just, you must you have some amazing her. moments where like she'll look across at you and you'll be doing something yeah. and you'll be and that must be like yeah. priceless there must be it's some like, the energy yeah yeah totally yeah amazing yeah oh, that's yeah. fantastic yeah so uh yeah. um so yeah i mean have you got any favorites just whilst we're on janelle like i don't want to labor it too much but obviously it's notable and you are a 
really notable collaborator so it's Thank worth you. kind of investing a, a little bit of time in um i especially like things like mushroom mushrooms and roses which very early on kind of pull her into this like rock field this psychedelic field these kind of other things that most soul and r and b artists don't go into the realms of at all if if ever do you know what i mean so yeah, um right and so i obviously uh that i'm guessing stems from her relationship with you to a degree oh yes oh absolutely so absolutely. can you tell me a bit about maybe that song how that came together yeah I mean, it was pretty pretty um typical uh where um janelle monet and nate wonder uh, and chuck lightning are, are are collaborating on a song idea and um um, Nate approached me and asked me um, if I could write a bridge for the song. And um, so I was able to come up with the music to the bridge and then Janelle um, came up with, you know, lyrics and, and everything. Right. And so and there you have Mushrooms and Roses and it's definitely um, the feel of, of one of my number one inspirations, Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I mean, any, anybody who plays guitar probably should. <laughs> Hopefully, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, if not, then you know, I just, you know, good luck to them. But you know, <laughs> so yeah, it's a hard one it, to ignore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, so, I mean, yeah. I mean, he bleeds through. Kind of uh, the 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 cool thing about it is it is it has that kind of. I was chatting actually with um, the guitarist from Dust Junkies in the previous show about um, how hard that the the spirit of Hendrix is uh, somewhere in the sound of saturation it feels mm -hmm. like and somewhere mm -hmm. in the sound of that it getting a little too wild and mm -hmm. so the, and mushrooms roses really has it's like it goes a little too wild which is <laughs> yes. do you know what i mean which is great <laughs> yes. which is uh, i think that it that, that's when you really like that electric church blues or whatever they call it it's like yes. that channeling to something higher kind of thing it really does yes. there's certain people that obviously you know aforementioned prince gets there very easily sometimes yes. you know that yep. end of end of the cross live when he's like ripping out and it's just like oh right you're yes. beaming lightning to and from the heavens right now or something. seriously oh my gosh yeah oh, yeah so goodness. i mean those moments must be amazing to be playing on stage do you lose yourself in them oh yes oh man it's it's like church you know we're just feeling spirit and, did you did and... you grow up playing any gospel um like in gospel things I, I had the pleasure of going to a harlem gospel service when i was in new oh. york last uh, last uh, november Good and, for you. Nice. Well, I just really wanted to experience it, being honest. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, one of these, it's like a crucial missing part of like the education that a lot of my favorite musicians mm. had as their kind of grassroots. I had like the youth center punk scene, if you know what I mean, like yes. grunge, grunge punk kind of indie English kind of whatever that is. That was yeah. my kind of upbringing in music. But a lot of people obviously, you know, that I listen to uh, come up through playing gospel. And so it's, and it was funny uh, in all the, and I mean no disrespect to any of the Prince uh, acts that continue uh, tribute acts or his ex bands and things like that. But mm. when I went to that gospel thing, there was something about it that was actually closer in feel to seeing Prince than any of those gigs that I'd seen by any of the, the backing bands or the mm. tribute bands or anything mm. like that. There was just something, mm deep at its core that was like there was sewn in if that makes sense that, yeah. that suddenly it, and it connected me again to like obviously prince's music and all this other music in a much kind of deeper more more um understanding way i think like you know from having that so yeah i was just wondering obviously uh, i haven't even mentioned this whole time by the way that your uncle's your, your, both your dad was a trombonist, that's correct, yes. right? Yes. Um, and then, uh, and he was trombonist for whom, sorry? Well, was he? he was trombonist for, for, mostly for himself. And I mean, he would jam with my uncle Maceo every right, now and yeah, then. Right, yeah, yeah. He, he was a, he was the first black professor at Columbia University Law School. Oh, wow. That's what he was more famous for. Really? <laughs> wow. And what, what year was that? Gosh, uh, he started there, uh, I want to say, 1973 oh wow until he so passed in 2000 oh i'm sorry to hear that um but yeah that's amazing what an achievement 
Yeah, like, thank you. I mean, and in him. those days, do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that's 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 the the very building blocks of kind of uh, American black, um, you know, the culture starting to kind of assert itself in America and have its own kind of you know life. If you know, I feel like Pretty anyway. I, I feel yeah. like that's when you know it starts like the axis starts shifting, if that makes sense. Whereas right. like the 60s feels like all the work to be done on the back of the 50s and such, and then the, the 70s seems to be when finally things start to be kind of solidifying and happening. And you know what I mean? And in yeah. culture, especially, like you see across comedy, you see across mm -hmm. music, you see mm -hmm. you see a lot of like suddenly, you know, it's just let in if that makes sense so right so yeah so that's that's amazing and in the world in the world of law to do that is quite right a phenomenal Paving thing, the way. Right? yeah yeah, yeah man, that must yeah, have been yeah. hard work well good on him and he kept up trombone yeah. at the same time My yeah, goodness. He did. <laughs> <laughs> and, and at, a level where, at a level where macia would still let him come and play do you know what i mean yeah, <laughs> <right>. yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah so, so how was that I, I wanted to just quickly dwell on that like uh, how how was that like did you did you have much um contact with macia as your uncle and uh, your other uncle was um uh, obviously uh the drummer Melvin, in James yes, band. Melvin, yeah, yes. Melvin, yeah, which yes. is incredible, right? Yeah, it's like, uh, really? I, I inherited this? This is amazing. How you much know? did you know and when did you know it? Uh, I knew right off the bat. Actually, when I was a kid, I knew of Maceo more so as the saxophonist for Bootsy's Rubber Band. Right, amazing. That was, that was the current thing. And, um, but, um, but yeah, then when uh, James Brown got released from, from prison, uh, Maceo joined right, back yeah, with James Brown. Yeah. So we would go to, um, as a little kid, I would go see James Brown concerts with my dad. <laughs> yeah. So jealous. Right? So jealous. I, mean, I would get in there early, early enough for just like, just to miss sound check, at like the tail end of sound check, and um, just stay, because I was way under, way underage, so I didn't yeah, want to get yeah. caught. You know, yeah. so he just kind of kept me in the back, and to see like people like um, Robert Plant you know come through and wow. you know keith hernandez from the mets and like all these different um you know celebrities and, and legends watching james brown uh, yeah it's pretty remarkable he was amazing yeah. i mean obviously yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's amazing i never did get to see him which is you know like i'm always going to be a bit like about do you know what i mean like, there's yeah. one gig that they did in he did in hyde park it was him supporting the chili peppers and i and my friend oh. one of my best friends who's a similar age saw that gig and i still to this day don't know why i didn't go i still you know when you're young you just somehow you make choices and you're like why didn't i go to that thing like I'm, Amazing. <laughs> I'm the same way i can't believe i missed you know the who i still have not i mean <laughs> i bought tickets to see the who last year and Something happened. I think I had a show. Oh yeah, Janelle Monáe show popped up. Really? So you still so haven't I, actually seen the Who? No. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's the worst, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I was. Uh, yeah. I mean, I. I guess since Prince as well, I've been on a bit of a war path to see people if I really want yes. to. Like I, I got my tickets for Stevie Wonder doing songs in the key of life the mm. minute they came out. Do you know what I mean? It's like yes, wow. I'm, th I'm there. You know, yeah, so, yeah, that was amazing. You've you've had some contact with Stevie Wonder, have you not? Yes, yes, we've had um, the opportunity to um, play a few a few shows with him. We did something in uh, we did the Flint, Michigan fundraiser uh, show uh, to help with the water situation that was there, the crisis there that was going on over there. Um, we did something with him in uh, L.A. at the Hollywood Bowl a few years ago. Amazing. amazing. Yeah, just amazing. amazing. I mean. There's someone who talk about inspiration. There's somebody who yeah. uh, plays piano like he can not only see everything that he's doing, but he plays piano like that's what he that's it. Like he's a real yeah. pianist. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like uh, what baffles me is the drums. Like right. I saw footage of that. That was when it really. I'd always known and it'd always been there, but I think yeah. when I saw when I, I saw some footage, I think it was um, the classic albums songs in the key of life thing actually and he mm -hmm. was replaying bits of it in the studio or whatever and he's just bashing out the drums and i was like how does that yeah. even do you know what i mean how he like, makes... <laughs> my, my, my he, brain he, let me tell you we had a jam session with him after one of his shows and i was like okay time for me to go back to the woodshed and practice my ass off because this man yeah, can play makes anybody just 
seem like they should be doing more, right? <laughs> yeah, like we got no excuses, you know what I mean? <laughs> he's amazing. His birthday just passed, thank goodness. And yeah, he's, yeah. He's well, he's, he's healthy and, awesome. and, um, and amazing and still young. Is it, you know, yeah, so? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, so I mean, uh, just so getting back to you a bit, um, so what was your last summer holiday? Oh, yes. I will say last summer when, well, it was more like fall, tail into summer, fall, when I went to um, that place behind me. <laughs> oh, awesome. Brilliant. Yeah. Disneyland yeah. or Disney World? Disney World. Disney World, yeah. Do you yeah. think Disney World is better or, or do you think Disneyland is better? Disney, well, you know, I hate to get people mad, but... Disney World over Disneyland. I absolutely. think Disney World. And it also has the benefit of if you are like, obviously when you're in England, you need to do a few things at once or whatever. And it, right. we went, uh, me and my brothers went over there for WrestleMania um, at the mm. Citrus Bowl. Ridiculous, mm. like insane. Um, but like every funny. other day we went to um, a theme park. So, cause they're all within striking distance if you're in yeah. Orlando. So you do yeah. get to do like the Marvel World of Adventure, you know, like, Marvel World at Universal and stuff like that right. as well. Yeah, so, so yeah. Fun. So, whereas oh if God. you go to Disneyland, you're kind of like, oh, it's not so. You've got a Sea World, a Sea Land, Sea World thing there. Yeah, Sea World, but which yeah, I haven't yeah. seen yet. But, um, and then there's the Universal, I will say. I think Universal in Orlando is probably better because it it's got more rides. But yeah. Universal in LA, oh man, that tour. If you, have you been to the tour yet? Have you been to uh, LA? Universal? I did when I was young, but I haven't been on yeah. it for years. I mean, it used to do all the old school. Like, you know, the Psycho House, the Jaws, right. Jaws Shark. But they've changed they still have that. those. Do they still have that exact they still, one? Is they it? still have Jaws, but um, trust me, you want to go there now. It's, I don't want to give anything away. It's, that's my favorite ride. In really? Like yeah. Overall, favorite ride. Okay, wicked. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't think we'd get onto that, did we? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's fun. <laughs> oh my awesome. God. So, uh, I'm just going to confer with my notes. Okay, so, um, so yeah, okay, so quick, I'll do you a quick summer quiz. Okay, and yeah, it's just to okay. just answer one or the other. <laughs> this is just random, so don't take it too seriously. Okay. <laughs> Donna Summer or Jimmy Somerville? Say that one more time. Donna Summer or Jimmy Somerville? Donna Summer. Right, okay. <laughs> uh, summer Breeze or Summer in the City? Summer Breeze. Oh, I hear a little Isley in your playing sometimes, by the way, yes, just as a yes. detour, yeah. I mean, I, admittedly, Hendrix played for Isley Brothers before he got big and everything anyway, oh, didn't yeah. he? So, so, yeah. so I dare say their next guitarist probably came in on like a, you've got to play a bit like him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least a bit, do you know what I mean? <laughs> So, so yeah, so yeah. I feel like who's that lady and stuff like that. Even though yes. it's not not Jimmy, it still has something mm. of his uh, uh, fluidity or tonality yeah. or something in it. Yeah, yeah. All that suspension of um, of um, feedback, which I guess was still right. new in Soulful. his day or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cutting yeah. edge. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any yeah. tricks for like you know like when you're on stage and you've got to get that that big bit of sustain and feedback do you have to turn around and, like face your amp or do you have a a little one louder <laughs> pedal that kind of boosts it for you all the above all of know, it <laughs> I, all of it and i tell depending I, uh, what you need you've got various yeah. steps of insanity because you know because there are times when i'm out in the front of the house and i'm right. away from everything yeah, away so from all my to... speakers so i you know i i you know talk to my friend who tony who is our uh, stage monitor guy and yeah. he cranks me up he, you know he knows how to crank me up on the yeah, side field yeah, so, so that, that you get can that actually feedback. hear when you're roaming and stuff like that yeah yes. otherwise that'd be awful wouldn't it you go over there and then suddenly you can't hear there's nothing well yeah. it's very entertaining but what's he playing you know? yeah right <laughs> <laughs> oh i have some stories that's another that's another yeah. <laughs> oh no please do divulge <laughs> go on then what was your worst what's your worst like oh no really like Ooh. I'm the one say, that you share anyway. <laughs> the one that well, <laughs> I'm going to say the worst one really was um, probably, I will say when, <laughs> there are a few bad ones, um, but maybe I'll say the one when we were on this most recent tour, uh, my wireless 
was really malfunctioning severely. Right. Uh, it, it, the guitar was doing nothing but crackling so loud. It sounded like a, a short, you know, you have a short in your, you know, you know even when you unplug your, your speaker cable, the yeah, speaker's yeah. on. It's, yeah. That's constant, so, that. Yeah. And, oh. you know, it's, and during prime time, and Janelle's singing. It's just oh, no, her. on the softest yes. moment that you could possibly yeah. have. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and she's looking at me like, what the hell are you doing? What are you, you doing? doing man? <laughs> this I'm is like, not the time. For it's not me, I promise. <laughs> right. <laughs> It was horrible. Yeah, I, I've had like, um, I used to run my vocals through a, a boss, um, one of those pitch shift delays, you know, the uh, ultra harmonics kind of, not, not uh, ultra harmonics, um, the other one, the blue one with the yeah. pitch shift delay on it, yeah. And it's oh, got the... like five settings or whatever. Okay, and it's got okay. like three delays and then three pitch shifters or whatever. Oh, is it one by low, boss? One high, yeah, boss one, yeah. Oh, yeah. that one, okay, I know something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I used to run my vocals through that, and then one nice. of them, poor, poor pedal, it's just a bit of the dust, because our gigs were kind of like the Stooges or something. It was like crazy, me all over the place, smashing things, sweating. I want to see this. Yeah, crazy. I'll send you some footage. links. You'll be like, oh, my goodness, he seems so normal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you do. <laughs> but you never yes, <laughs> so there'd be a lot of like fluid leakage and things getting, and it get, would get pulled as I'd wander over there. It'd get pulled, and eventually just the join just couldn't take it anymore, and it'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> all the time and i just have to eventually i just abandoned using the pedal because i couldn't kind of step up I, without kind of you know doing so i couldn't find a way to step up so i thought i'll leave it to i'll just ask the sound guy to stick some delay on sometimes you know <laughs> right I mean? rather right. than have like every gig blighted by like <laughs> Oh like God. as we get further into the gig you know and it's highlighted too right the, the noise would be <laughs> echoing back and forth <laughs> oh yeah yeah you can end up with whole <laughs> loops of it and stuff like that right yeah. <laughs> right and the endless, noise no end of hell yeah yeah, totally. yeah. Yes. awesome yeah that must be awful as well when you're busy doing it and everybody's like looking at you and you're like no honestly it's the gear like, <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> it's not me i promise <laughs> <laughs> wicked okay so back to the quiz uh, yes. This is this is a tough one. Um, everybody loves sunshine, or you are the sunshine of my life. Oh, you are the sunshine of my life. Right, fair enough. Yeah, yes. it's a tough one though, isn't it? I was like, oh, it is. Oh, that's like it is. It, it is. They're both amazing, but wow. <laughs> I mean, I I can't believe that a human, one human being wrote that song. <laughs> you're the same yeah right yeah yeah there's a few like that that he's done being honest yeah. where you're like oh wow just one just one human uh, it's, incredible. It's, the, it's the prince that same prince factor where it's just like he's the model where like yeah there's yeah. um so uh hot fun in the summertime or summertime blues oh man uh, off the bat i'm gonna go with hot fun in the summertime fair enough fair enough it's tough yeah. isn't it again I it's tried tough to... it's Okay. It's just the it just rings the hook rings in my head a little bit stronger. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Um, okay, movies now. Uh, mm. Summer of Sam or Midsummer? Ooh, I have not seen Midsummer, so right. I'm gonna okay, say so you've gotta Summer go Summer of Sam. Sam. <laughs> fair enough, fair yeah. enough. Cool. Yeah, Midsummer's worth a watch. It's a it's it's okay. alright. It's definitely uh, it's definitely in the. I think Janelle would like it actually if she hasn't oh, seen yeah. it already. It's in. It's definitely in the uh, in the vein of some of the stuff she's been in in recent times, or seems to be about to be in with Antebellum and things like that. Yes, so, yeah, I can't wait to yeah. see Antebellum. I think she, yeah, oh, it's a uh, very arty take on horror, like very oh. kind of indie arty take on horror. Nice, so, yeah, okay. Like weird, weird cult out in like Europe, like who do have oh. weird sacrifice rituals and things like that. But oh, okay. I don't want to spoil too much. Yeah. So yeah. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Dig it. Dig into it. But yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And this one's a cheat. But Sun Ra or Sun Tzu? I mean, I know Sun Ra, so I'll say Sun Ra. Fair enough. Fair Who's enough. the other one? Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu, the art of war. <laughs> oh, I need to write. Cindy, I need to write these things down. Well, you you could go back yeah, and the, the whole the whole point of this show is you could go back and there's little all these little Easter eggs and bits and bobs that you can pick out of it. It should Brilliant. hopefully, it's only meant for the purpose of the lockdown, but hopefully it should have some kind of, you know, um, something of worth after there's a little time capsule. That's great. I think it will. I really do. We'll find out, I guess. Yeah. I, I, you, you should never, um, I feel like 
uh, after all these years of making things, I, I feel like I should do it for the making and be in the moment of the making and not have too many ideas about anything after for its life after and and just be thankful with whatever comes That's along if you know what i mean just try to i don't know, know long long and uh you know, hard earned words seriously <laughs> yeah i learned that lesson <laughs> this this year so, oh my god so i'm conscious of the fact that we're i don't know when zoom's gonna you know be like hey you've talked enough and stuff like oh, that's that. right so yeah. i want to get back to you um before okay. we're, we're out of time so is there an album planned a solo album yes yes so i am currently working on finishing a rock opera oh amazing yes it's very exciting it's going to be wow. about you know love and and um, heartbreak and betrayal and um, awesome and and survival and um, so summertime is going to be on the album. Summertime is kind of like the the moment of um, of finding yourself after all the craziness that you that this character went through. Right. So yeah. I'm and is that about personal? That. Is that is that a, a metaphorical a Cindy Mayweather to your own for your own personality? Is that, yes, it is. Uh, yes, it awesome. is. How did you know? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I was just, yeah, I just figured, yeah, well, you've obviously gone through, you know, like years and years of, and, and been at the side of things. How, uh, is it a huge pressure to do your own thing or do you feel like freed up by the fact that you've been around all these amazing influences and it can all pour into what you do? Yeah, I, f I feel very, it feels very freeing to me to be able to do this and, um, uh, I think I would say the only thing is the pressure to um, to to relax and to letting it be released without my perfectionist mentality, which I which I have. I've been working on this for a very long time. How long would many, you say? Many years, uh, um, just many years, and yeah, um, rewriting adding, songs, adding adding songs, new yeah, bits, adding, subtracting, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. updating, re-recording, and um, it's gotten to the point where everyone who is really close to me is like. Damn it! Will you release the damn thing now? <laughs> and so, is this your now? This is your push. Are you like trying to precipitate things almost in a way to get yourself to kind of go, okay, right? Well, I've set this ball rolling, so I've really got to, got to do it now. Yes, exactly, exactly. Right. So summertime. Sorry, I, May I keep 29th. leaving you only small answers because I keep saying something. And then you go, yes. Yeah, that. yeah. No, I love it. <laughs> 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 you're I my say like person. a sentence like that, and then you're like, "Yeah, that's yep. it." <laughs> it's like uh, it's like you're the translator. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, well, I guess musicians all need. I think it's always good to have a little bit of a conduit. I feel like that's yes. what producer. Do you feel um uh, when you're producing? So do you send your stuff off to people like for their ears? Like you've obviously you know great producers, you know great musicians. Yes. Do you ever like? Do you ever call up Niall and go, hey, what's the, what do you reckon to this one? Like, That's a good idea. I actually haven't done that. But, um, but yes, I'm actually sending this out to the uh, Wonderland team right, very yeah. shortly and get their opinion on everything. Um, they have heard most of it uh, a couple of months in ago. In bits and, and stuff. In bits oh, and yeah, pieces, yeah. yeah. So um, just make sure we're all kind of on the same page and get well, what, to what, what, what are we talking? Like a full, like a CD's worth, like a full 16, 18 song, like epic it's an yeah? it's it's an it's about an, it's like an hour hours worth of music right seriously. wicked yeah big yeah. chunky and uh, like how many yeah. songs roughly or is it sort uh, of something definitely? something like 12 I, I right say. okay cool that's quite compact for a rock yeah. opera yeah i think that's that's well, fairly succinct maybe 15. i mean in the modern age that's still obviously like a huge amount of attention for, yes. for people i guess yes, but it, it being a rock opera obviously it'll have your highs and lows and your compelling right. parts right. and stuff like right. that you hear a lot yeah. of vocal range as well lots of guitar right yeah yeah, yeah. and are you are you playing uh, everything on it or have you roped in friends and i'm things playing like i'm playing everything on some of the songs but i have worked in my violinist alex weil on wow. on the music and um Gosh, trying to think offhand who else is on there. Do you, uh, do you play uh, drums yourself? I do, but not not in this apartment. <laughs> 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 so so thanks for actually yes, Dax. Thanks for saying drums. Right, Dax yeah. Nielsen, the son of Rick Nielsen, is playing drums oh, wow. on this as well. He's on one Amazing. of the songs. Awesome. Yeah. Do you have Amazing. like lots of friends who are just like 
kind of relate to because they can relate it to like famous musicians because they can relate to how you to your do you, do you find you connect with yes like that? i absolutely do yeah we're, we're we're we can kind of we understand what we're going through and and um, we help each other out uh leon cattrell is also on the album playing drums on a couple of the songs um but yeah you know i was like I was like, Dax, man, what do I, what do I owe you for this? And he said, just spell my name correctly. That's all I ask. <laughs> I'm like, wow, thank and you. And how is it spelled, just for the record? Dax, D-A-X-X. -X. Right, brilliant, awesome, right. He, so, yeah. And so his father, you know, his father wrote, I want you to want me. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's a trick. That's yeah. crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You, um, you're, you're a cheap trick man, aren't you? That's Big a, time, that's they're, where I get they're the weird, from. They're a weird thing that... Um, I didn't know anything about them in this country. Like I never heard of them from living in this country. And oh, yeah. the first time I ever heard of them was probably from Billy Corgan banging on uh, about them because he's a big fan yeah. of, of them. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah. I think that was probably the first time I ever heard of yeah. them. But yeah, like crazy. That's crazy, isn't it? Like man, yeah. Because uh, obviously, you know, a cheap trick, um, like a really big like band, also with like like they had a good kind of kid audience, like kind of teen kid audience right. didn't they so right. so yeah so that must be really yeah. cool for you yeah. again like you're, yeah it's it's nice work because it's not all related i guess even to like other things i guess you know you can be like oh well that's semi related to maceo and things like that but other things are like they're more about like your you as a rock kid and that right. and kind of like oh yeah the rock, yeah wow that's exciting <laughs> to me as a as a rock kid you know yeah you know what I mean? whereas yes. a lot of the other things i guess uh might be i suppose it must have been something to get adjusted to seeing Robert Plant at that early age. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was not expecting that at all. To kind of like take a look to my left and there he is standing there just yeah. you know, shaking his head to, to James Brown. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Zeppelin must have been probably, uh, Zeppelin, Hendrix and Bowie must have been my first kind of rock kind of things. Deep Purple maybe along, you oh, know, yeah. kind of creeping along there. And it's my dad's, yeah. my dad, mom and dad's taste. And then, then they got into like lots of kind of 80s stuff like Roxy, Roxy yeah. Music and Brian Ferry and yes. know, things like that, like quite arty. My, my mom was fashion designer, so she was oh. like, uh, so she was like very into kind of like all that suave kind of vibe of, she did a um, Art Deco 20s kind of style kind of mm. evening wear, which was a flapper-esque dresses and stuff like that so yeah Fancy. yeah yeah amazing being honest yeah just like amazing like i sound like obviously you know but she they did she went from um basically they were poor when they had me uh she made her own dresses people said oh you should make something for me and then she got started like that and then suddenly uh, started doing these other designs and got on to the point wow. where they were doing dubai and prat a porter and God. like all the main kind of you know the london fashion all that kind of you know all the main stuff and everything so so yeah so really inspirational in that way yeah That's yeah amazing. yeah definitely yeah i mean i don't being honest i think it's all just in pictures because this was all 80s and pre some of their right. customers were like duran duran for their girlfriends paul oh. young for his backing singers hot oh. chocolate patty boulet if you've ever heard of her um no. she she was kind of like almost like Oh, uh, like a British equivalent to Diana Ross in a strange way, even though she was American, if that makes sense. You know, how oh, okay. sometimes <laughs> Americans okay. come over here and like, like yes. how fun loving like, criminals are, are bigger here than they are in oh, America. And oh, yeah, like, yeah, all Tennis yeah. Friend Darby came over, even Jimi Hendrix yeah. came over here yeah. to, to get big, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, yeah, I do remember that. reading about that too. Fun loving criminals, I, uh, I know one of the guys in that band. I'm, are they still together? Which one, Huey? Yeah, the, we the tell him to do the interview. He lives in Bath. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Move. Tell him to. Well, Huey lives in in Bath, as far as I know, because he walks his dog yeah. around here somewhere. My oh friend my has seen him. The guy who writes my jokes for the beginning bit of the show, he yeah. sees him around Bath. So. <laughs> wow, I haven't seen those guys in a long time. Really? Well, yeah. if if you happen to come across them, tell them to get in touch with me, and I'll do the same if I please. If I, yeah, I'll send the yes. To you. So oh yeah, so God. when when are we looking at this album coming out then? Have you got any kind of firm plans? I'm I'm leaning towards fall. It's gonna be it's definitely gonna be fall, not sooner than that. So right, yeah. You know, maybe I'll send you a little um a little uh, private Teaser. little link. I would love. Yeah. I would yeah. love that. I would love that. Are you gonna go out and tour solo? Man, I I plan on as soon as this pandemic is over. 
yeah and so oh, yeah. so have you got have you got a bit of time off from janelle for the next little while or is like a, is or is it just that you can fit all these things around each other or we, yeah, I, I work with her, you know, I, um, I'm very close with, obviously, with Janelle Monet and her um, booking agent and, uh, and make sure that our stuff is linked Synced together. Up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to, you know, miss a Janelle Monet tour for my tour. I'm going to make it work. If there's time yeah. to do everything, I'm sure. Yes, anyway, there is isn't plenty there? of time. So what would you do if this is a big rock opera? Are you gonna like have like a touring rock opera? Is that how you're gonna present it? Or are you gonna just do them as live songs and then the album be its kind of own beast? Yeah, live I'll do it kind of like the way the Who did Tommy live as a band. Right, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This seems to be a big model that you keep coming back to. <laughs> <laughs> you better see them sometime because you don't want to- you, you're gonna also you might end up doing all your time then like people say it's just like seeing the hula and you'd be like oh no damn it i could have avoided this criticism <laughs> seriously seriously you know actually now rogers of all people told me how amazing roger Daltrey still is as really? a singer on stage. yeah awesome yeah because they do things together they've done some actually they had a, a a fundraiser like a year or so ago that i couldn't go to so i was on oh, tour really? but but yeah, and Rod, Roger Daltrey can really still sing. That's remarkable. He's yeah, one of those yeah. power singers, so yeah, yeah, it's hard to do. Amazing. And so do you have any, are there any people that you still have that you actually would like to work with? I guess maybe someone like that would be amazing. Oh, yeah. If, um, I'm, op I mean, I'm open. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of people that I love and respect. So, yeah, yeah. You know, you know how you know to reach me, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Just it's easy. His name's even really simple on Instagram as well. So you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. So um, and you've got videos. You've got a new video coming out. Who's by uh, by the amazing Mark Maxwell, who is yes a fierce talent. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we He's can incredible. both agree. Like very futuristic. Yeah, otherworldly. Yes. Like very otherworldly i like find his his stuff's uh you scroll through on instagram you're like this is gives me the same sensation as when i see a great movie pull off some awesome strange effect or strange surrealist mm -hmm. scene or something like that and you're getting that through like a minute clip in a in a phone i feel like he's right. uh right he's quite there's something really really forward thinking about his and uh, translatable to the modern age mm -hmm, about his mm -hmm. his his uh, work slash medium and he's everything. so good. Yeah, we're doing. We did a video to the song "Sugar," which will be a bonus track for those who purchase the album right, on yeah. Apple Music. So awesome! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Save your and save your dollar ninety nine, guys, or whatever. However much. Yeah, it costs. yeah. Whatever that. Yeah, I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's only a little. It's only a little something. I should, it's oh, yeah. worth it when you get a video. You get a get a B side in yeah. with with a song then you know that's that's yes. a bargain, isn't it you yeah know? you got to pay for music anyway otherwise it's all gonna stop <laughs> there's yeah. a buck the buck has to stop somewhere the, you know? right. <laughs> the, uh, the buick stops here <laughs> <laughs> hopefully the buick will never stop yes right. no right <laughs> so, yeah, so, so then so so we're gonna have a new single is dropping what what date was that may, 20, may 29th 8th, summertime. 29th yes okay yes, awesome. Friday, may that's 29th. sometime you have a video for summertime or or that's not just, yet just now yeah we're just we're putting together a little uh, a little lyrical video oh nice awesome wicked yeah awesome that that'd be cool awesome wicked. Yeah. So, and then the album in the fall and yes. hopefully as soon as as soon as we can get out of the house some kalindo live dates let's go Let's awesome still rock and roll wicked well yeah awesome i think we've we've done everything and i i think i took i've gone over your hour and so i hope zoom is still there it <laughs> says it's still recording so hopefully it won't let us awesome. down did i leave anything out uh just for my own for my yeah. own pleasure really more than anything yes. as a prince fan i just wanted to hear a little about like your interactions with prince and i'll link it in by saying play in the sunshine there you go <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Wow. I, uh, he was a gentleman, um, very cool and approachable. Um, you know, I remember every, whenever he would come to our show, he would come backstage after the show was over and, and tap me on the shoulder or the elbow and, and be like, Hey, do you want to go jam? And, and I remember, did, yeah. 
Oh yeah, the answer was always yes, even though I, I felt like, you know, I wanted to dinner and bed. Yes, just shower maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, shower, you know, because I just I was exhausted at that point. But but looking at this guy who is a legend, who mm. is older, like he's he's been doing yeah it for yeah, and so well that's like Maceo. Oh, I'd, I'd be, yeah. I'd be watching uh, on these O2 shows, you know. They, I'd go to the after shows where the MPG would be playing, and I'd be getting a bit tired, and I'd look up, and there's Maceo still going, and I'm like, "What am I doing? Feeling tired? You know? I'm just watching." <laughs> you yes. know, you know? <laughs> right? And it's like three in the morning, and Maceo is still going crazy. Do you know Amazing. what I mean? And he's like, yeah. and he's on top form. Uh, so, what kind of songs did you play these jams? What kind of stuff? Man, um, that's a good question. It was, I'm trying to think, it was like impro I improv. I guess we're talking like thing. three in the morning kind of thing. Yeah. Who, yeah, who, else, who else was song. in these jams with you and stuff? It, I mean, sometimes Maceo. I remember we did a show in yeah. uh, Chicago at the House of Blues. Well, the show was some, some venue, but then the jam was at the House of Blues. Right. And Maceo was there uh, because he was on tour with Prince at the time. And Amazing. I yeah. guess we played Maceo songs and, and yeah. you know, not the obvious, you know, cover, but... Um, you know, we just jammed well, out yeah, yeah, on yeah. funk and usually yeah, play, yeah, play yeah. bass or, or, or yeah, piano. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're just, yeah, mate, that must be crazy as well, right? Yeah. You're like playing guitar and like there's Prince over there and you're like, yeah. anytime, anytime this goes badly, I'm just going to like chuck it yeah. over. <laughs> <laughs> it did I'm sorry, I should <laughs> 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 yes oh my gosh he's so great we only yeah. played guitar we, he only played guitar with me once and that right. was captured on video um madison square garden oh yeah yeah amazing wow yeah. yeah and how's that that must be like a crazy thing to just i'm presuming it, you grew up on the same kind of print stuff as i did and right it's it's the it's like the, the <laughs> I mean, yeah. So I'm I, we're at Mad Square Garden. I'm watching him perform from underneath the symbol. You know, is the stage with the symbol. Yeah, the yeah. Symbol. And so I'm yeah. looking from from behind, and all of a sudden he stops playing. He turns around. He comes towards me, and I'm just like, uh oh, why is he coming this way? And he goes, hey, he goes, hey, Kalinda, you want to come jam? And I'm like, right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm yeah, thinking. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like thinking, where would I go? Like, what, what am I going to plug into? Like, what? So, yeah, went upstairs and jammed on the song. She gets into my hair. Oh, she's always in my hair. Amazing. Yeah, always in my hair. Yeah. 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 yeah, brilliant. Oh yeah. wow, what, what one to be up on stage for as well? I know, I know. It's Classic. like ironic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. I love that song. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. I mean, being honest, yeah. That's that. That's, I could probably just talk to you for another hour about Prince stories. So yeah. yeah. So, so thank you. Anyway, I'll let you go. Thanks so thank much for spending much. the time. Um, best of luck for all the future. Um, uh, you, you rock, thanks so man. much for doing. The, no, you do. You do. All, honestly, thanks so much for doing these show as well. Yeah, I just really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. I had, Cheers, I had a lot of fun. Cheers. And you take care of yourself. Yeah, stay healthy. I will. Thank you. You're you too. Wicked.